Ron, you were executive vice president of global merchandising at Best Buy for about three years. Uh, can you tell us uh, something about your major responsibilities in that position? What was uh, interesting, two major tasks. When I joined the company, the organization was right at the beginning of developing the customer centricity strategy, which segmented the, the company into fundamentally uh, four or five major categories of customers, and I can come back to what those were. The second thing uh, was there was a significant strain on um, the, the use of space in the organization. That is, the center of the store uh, was very unproductive. And I remember meeting with the chairman uh, very early in my tenure, him saying, you know, you got to figure out what you're going to do with all this extra space, and oh, by the way, you need to get out of this uh, category called appliances. <laughs> so some significant challenges on both sides. From a customer uh, standpoint, the customer centricity project was really all about working from the customer back up through the supply chain to drive um, more highly uh, differentiated solutions and more highly value into, uh, added solutions. So it really, uh, the mantra at Best Buy was um, who's the customer, what's the value proposition, how are you going to make money? And if you couldn't answer those three questions, you really had to stop and think about what you were doing. Uh, the customer segments that developed were uh, what was called Barry, which is a very high-end customer. It's men of uh, high means that are in love uh, with gadgets. There was um, Ray, who was a um, kind of an everyday man, maybe a policeman, a fireman, a teacher, or maybe even a professor. Um, <laughs> there was um, Jill, um, who was a um, uh, generally a suburban or sometimes an urban uh, woman who was a little bit techno savvy, but not quite, had some anxieties about technology. And then another segment that, that emerged was called Best Buy for Business, uh, which was a small business user. And those were the four segments that we really honed in on and changed the business model around. Yeah, does, does that mean that the different Best Buy stores in different locations look different? Yeah, absolutely. Over time, what happened was uh, if you walked into a Barry store, you would, you would Understand you're in a Best Buy. It still looked and felt like a Best Buy, but there's subtle differences. So, for example, um, about 2002 or so, uh, Best Buy bought a small hi-fi chain in the Pacific Northwest called Magnolia Audio Video and had 19 stores. Um, today, there are over 300 Magnolias across the country, all inside of a Best Buy. And those stores uh, are in Barry stores. So the stores are identified as having customers of uh, high means and very techno-savvy or thought they were techno-savvy, wanted the best. These are Mercedes, BMW kind of customers. And inside of a Best Buy, there's a completely separate environment called Magnolia that knows how to uh, cater best to those customers. Other stores, you might walk in and see a huge Geek Squad sign. And Geek Squad was a tiny little company that Best Buy bought in Minneapolis that um, serviced computers. And they were uh, developed uh, this gentleman named Robert Stevens developed them out of his dorm room at the University of Minnesota and fixed computers. And he developed this uh, adorable brand called Geek. Best Buy brought it inside the organization and through the customer centricity process figured out how to bring that culture into the organization, grow the culture, and now 800 stores across America have this thing called Geek Squad. And that's a, a major anchor to the Best Buy for Business strategy. In some of the Jill stores, you'll find personal shoppers. You'll find slightly different assortments and colors for, for women, a lot of experimentation around women. And uh, Ray is kind of Best Buy's core customer. It's the, the average American, of course. Um, and that uh, Ray would have more simplified solutions. Uh, things that appeal to Ray are more financing solutions, for example, than uh, big ticket solutions. Um, ways to acquire his audio, video, or computing equipment better over time. The other thing that happened with Jill was it gave us an opportunity to fix that appliance problem I talked about earlier. And um, the Best Buy uh, business and appliances not only has grown since the Centricity project was launched, Best Buy acquired a company in the West Coast called Pacific Sales, which is the largest Sub-Zero and Viking retailer in, in America, and, and by definition, of course, in the world. So they went from wanting to get out of appliances to buying the biggest high-end appliance retailer in the world. And that's an acquisition that never would have happened without the focus on Jill and customer centricity and, and everything it brought to the company. Does that mean that appliances are in Jill but not in other Best Buy stores? Appliances are in all stores, but if you go into a Jill store, 
you'll notice a much more robust appliance assortment. You'll notice uh, kitchen uh, vignettes where previously you would buy a, a range where the ranges were and a refrigerator where the refrigerator was and a dishwasher where the dishwasher was. Now they're in vignettes and with higher end solutions and more complete solutions in a Jill store.